Yes, ma'am. Uh, does your administration plan to take any steps to solve the problem at Fayette uh, County, Tennessee, where tenants come with farms and then evicted from their homes because they voted last November and must now live in tents? We are, uh, the Congress, of course, uh, enacted legislation which placed very clear responsibility on the executive branch to protect the right of voting. I am extreme, I supported that legislation. I am extremely interested in making sure that every American is given the right to cast his vote without prejudice to his rights as a citizen. And therefore, I can uh, state that this administration will uh, pursue uh, uh, the uh, problem of providing that protection uh, with all vigor. President. Yes. Uh, sir, would you please tell us how it was possible for you to do by executive order what Mr. Benson always told us was impossible for him to do without more legislation? I refer to the order expanding the distribution of food to the unemployed and giving them more variety in the diet. Well, I would not uh, attempt to uh, comment on Mr. Benson. I don't think there's any question of our rights to issue the executive order under the authority given to us by uh, the Constitution and by uh, legislative action. I think we're within our rights. It is a judgment as to what is the best use to make of the funds that are available. The funds are quite limited. The diet which is being provided for the people who are unemployed is still inadequate. But nevertheless, we have used the funds that are available uh, to the maximum. And uh, I don't think there's any question that we were within our rights. Uh, yes, uh, Ms. Means. Then, Mr. President, uh, there's been some apprehension about the instantaneous broadcast of presidential press conferences such as this one. Uh, the contention being that an inadvertent statement, uh, no longer correctable as in the old days, could possibly uh, cause some grave consequences. Do you feel there is any risk, or could you give us some thought on that? Subject? Well, it was my understanding that the statements made by the by President Eisenhower were uh, on the record. They may have been a clarification that could have been issued afterwards, but uh, it still would have demonstrated. It still would have been on the record as a clarification, so that I don't think that the interests of our country are. Uh, it seems to me they're as well protected under this system as they were under the system uh, followed by President Eisenhower. And this system has the advantage of providing more direct communication. I wondered, sir, if you could tell us what part you're playing in the effort to expand the Rules Committee and whether you feel your domestic program, whether the success of your domestic program in part depends on expanding the Rules Committee. Well, the Constitution states that each ho house shall be the judge of its own rules, and therefore, uh, Mr. The Speaker of the House, Mr. Rayburn, has been extremely anxious that uh, the House be permitted to settle this matter in its own uh, way. But I, it's, it's no secret that uh, I uh, would strongly believe that uh, the members of the House should have an opportunity to vote themselves on the uh, programs which we will present. Uh, that, I think, is uh, the reason the people selected them uh, to go to the House of Representatives and to the Senate and uh, selected me as president so that we could present programs and consider programs and vote on programs which uh, uh, are put forward uh, for the benefit of the country. Now, I feel that it would be, I'm hopeful that uh, whatever judgment is made by the members of the House, that it will permit the members to vote on these bills. This is a very difficult time in the life of our country. Many controversial measures will be presented, which will be in controversy and will be debated. But at the end, the majority of the members of the House, the majority members of the Senate, I hope will have a chance to exercise their will. And that a small group of men will not uh, uh, attempt to prevent uh, the members from finally letting their judgments uh, be known. For example, we have a housing bill which is going to come before the Congress this year. We have an aid to education bill. We have a, a legislation which will affect the income of farmers. Shouldn't the members of the House themselves, and not merely the members of the Rules Committee, have a chance to vote on those measures? But the responsibility rests with the members of the House, and I would not attempt in any way to infringe upon that responsibility. I merely give my view as an interested citizen. Yes? <laughs> yes? The state of New York gave you one of your handsomest majorities in the 1960 election campaign, but now the Democrats of New York are rather bitterly divided over leadership. As the leader of the Democratic Party nationally, are you going to take some steps to try and heal the splits in New York? Well, the um, people in New York, uh, the Democratic organizations uh, in New York who are interested in the success of the Democratic Party, they have to make their judgments as to what kind of a party they want to build there. I have asked Mr. Bailey, to, uh, the new chairman of the Democratic Party, to lend a helping hand in attempting to uh, alleviate some of the distress. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Mr. President, Mr. President, 
President, your own election has stimulated renewed uh, proposals for electoral reform. Do you have any objection to changing the present method of electing president, or do you favor any of the proposals? Well, I'm, uh, I do have uh, some thoughts on it. One that, uh, first place, uh, having been through the experience in 56, I think it was, of an attempt to substantially change the Electoral College, it's my judgment that no such change can secure the necessary support in the House, the Senate, and in the states of the Union. The area where I do think they, we perhaps could get some improvement would be in providing that the electors would be bound by the results of the uh, state elections. I think that that is a, would be a useful step forward. The electors, after all, the people vote. They assume that the votes are going to be cast in a way which reflects the judgment of a majority of the people of the state. And therefore, I think it would be useful to have that automatic and not set up this independent group who could vote for the candidate who carried the state or not, depending on their own personal views. That would be the first thing. Secondly, I'm hopeful that the Congress would consider the suggestions made, I think, first by President Theodore Roosevelt and later by uh, Senator Richard Newberger of having the national government participate in the financing of national campaigns because uh, the present system is not satisfactory. Perhaps it would be useful uh, to uh, go into that in more detail later and because I do think it's the most important subject. But I would say for the present that uh, this matter of the electors would be an area where I think we could usefully uh, move. Mr. Roberts? On a related subject, without being morbid, have you given any consideration to the problem which President Eisenhower resolved with his vice president? That is the problem of the succession in the case of injury, illness, or some incapacitation. Have you thought of uh, some agreement with the vice president, such as your predecessor? Yes, well, I haven't engaged, I haven't uh, developed that uh, at this present time, though I uh, do think that uh, President Eisenhower's decision was a uh, good one, and I think it would be a good precedent. Nothing's been done on it as yet, but uh, I think it would be a good matter in which we uh, could proceed on. Thank you.